Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drakewing Gaming. If you new me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings. So, y'all, let's just go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Push it back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes for entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Let me, uh, lower the volume a tiny bit. What is this? There we go. Okay. Alrighty. Alrighty. Very thing, various things came to mind. Only reading certain words or letters was one that I thought of immediately, but couldn't make out anything after trying to find a system within its array of letters and lines. Maybe I had to look more carefully. Uh, I think I know its meaning. After looking at it for a while, I came to the conclusion that the secret message said that said that Reza wanted me to plan some. What? You know, thing only figures out what to do. Find out more about their government. Go flee through the portal as soon as possible. Look at the letter again. Show more options. Have a pizza party. Steal a certain book from the library. Find out where Maverick lives. Break into the manufacturing plant. I am unable to decode the message. Show more <laughs> options. Okay. What the fuck? I can't do this. I don't know what to do. Read between the lines. Lines, of course. Maybe I'm supposed to read between them. I didn't have an implement. I didn't have an implement on me with which I would have been able to read fine print. Though with this handwritten letter, I doubted Reza could have done anything of the sort. Look elsewhere for hints. Or maybe he referred to the fact that we were both given an apartment. Considering the things they provided for us, maybe I just had to find the right object to decode the message. There are many everyday items here, though, and of course I still had no idea what in particular I was looking for. Look at the bookshelf. Look at the bathroom. Look at the kitchen bookshelf. The bookshelf was stocked with quite a variety of books on different topics. Look behind the books. Maybe Reza left me another message here at some point. He could have known that I was going to live here, so I suppose it's possible that he helped with preparations and hid something for me to find. It's just the creator, just plopping magazines and such down on his desk. No, after removing every single book from the shelf, there's still no indicator of anything that would help me decode his secret message. But even if Reza did leave a hint, this could have been anywhere in the apartment and not just on the bookshelf. In the individual book. Maybe it has something to do with the books. The shelf is full of them, but I suppose the hint could be hidden inside one of them. Which book should I look into? Oh, 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 oh. Draconic Desire. Oh, 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 oh. Oh! I was so young and naive back then. Barely having reached the age at which the arduous process of finding a mate... Settling down and starting a family became expected. Yet none of my peers interested myself. They were childish and crude and uncultured. I was lost in a sea of uncertainty, drifting, hoping to be found by one, by the one, one day. And then I did. How fast time flies when you're happy. I can't believe that this was just two weeks ago. Two weeks ago I found the one, my truest soulmate there ever could be. Like a wrecking ball, he came out of nothing, breaking all the barriers and entered my life. Two weeks ago I was nothing. Today, I am the happiest dragon alive. Who knew that out of all the people alive, it only took the right one to write to write life itself? Who knew that to meet the perfect one, the only thing you needed was... A penis. <laughs> I don't think there's anything in here. And who let this and who let this mess ever get to print? Sheesh! Assault of the humanoids from outer space. Oh! What? That's a cat! <laughs> Arc 1. It was a dark and stormy... <laughs> That's like the template for a horror novels. What the fuck? Relentlessly pouring was the rain outside, periodically interrupted by the loud echo of thunder again and again. So quick had its roaring staccato become that it almost seemed like someone was pounding against the door. No, someone really was pounding on the door right now. The door swiftly opened in the, mo in the moment for which the house's owner had waited decades finally was here. As on the field of battle do you meet me, human scum, but in the comforts of my own home do you seek to assassinate me? Feel my wrath! May it lead you to a slow and painful death! He screamed at the top of his lungs. Your resistance will only temper my blade, inferior creature. Taste my blade and die from it! The reply came from the human invader standing within the doorframe. Hero quickly stabbed him with his magi pen, a lethal hit which caused the human invader to slump to the ground instantly. His last words were, Damn you, hero! This is not over yet! I'm having way too much fun with this. 
while he melded it, while he melded into a red blotch, blotching up Hero's carpet. Shiro looked up into the sky and realized all the thunder and rain had really been the UFOs of the invaders, numerous enough to rival the raindrops falling from the sky. This was the moment when he knew it was too late. This meant war. Really? An invasion by human aliens? Is that what they think we're like? Looks like he's looking at Born to Serve. Aw oh, man, they should have had one called To Serve Man. I would have enjoyed that. Most of you will not get that reference, and I'm okay with that. It's a very old reference. Chapter 1, Rise from the Ashes From the day I was born, I knew it was destined for greatness. As a member of the, of the Avdonian household, nothing less was expected from me. My father, Avdon VI, yeah, Avdon VI, made sure of that. My mother, however, was a worm. Not literally, mind you. She was not some sort of annelid squirming beneath the earth and living in filth. No, she was just what I would describe as the lowest form of life. Not concerning herself with matters of any importance, she instead sought to base her existence on superficialities. Not that it mattered much, as I grew to hate them both equally. For those who may want to critique me now for saying this, I have no doubt of my father's political achievements, yet only those who had to live with him know that these successes came at the price of his very soul, an empty shell of a dragon driven by nothing but his performance as a politician, not as a father. Politician, huh? I wonder what their actual government is like. One second, guys, let me drink my water. Mmm. Ugh! So good. So good. I got this feeling. Okay. Price in Prayer. A, politi a politographical novel, okay. Preface. In the 1422nd year since our ascent to sentience, a most extraordinary chain of events led to the most extraordinary of circumstances in our politics and society. These events have since been buried in history, until I stumbled upon the records of the tumultuous times. I have taken it upon myself to dramatize the events in a manner that is both accurate to history as well as entertaining to any reader who might have interest in such stories. This is not just for my own personal gain, as I hope to make this story available to a larger audience than just a few who have permission to visit the archives. I believe the wisdom to be gained from the ensuing tale to be more relevant to us now than ever. The Ixaman Sphere and how to use it. Huh. As a manual meant for the general populace, this booklet intends to bring you, the valued reader, closer to the uses and joys of, of an Ximen Sphere might bring. I have taken utmost care to, sim to use simple language and instructions to remove a well-known barrier between individuals and knowledge of proper use of this most wondrous device. For interested parties, a chapter about the Ximen Sphere's history and ideas for advanced applications can be found later in the book. Quick Start Guide Step 1. Place your Ximen Sphere on a flat, stable surface. Make sure that the surface is indeed stable and flat. Expert tip, use a spirit level in order to determine if the surface is absolutely horizontal in order to prevent the Ixman Sphere from rolling off the table unintendedly. Step 2. Plug your Ixman Sphere into any fitting household outlet. Warning, make sure the Ixman Sphere's power switch is on the off position prior to plugging it in. Step 3. Locate the power switch of the Ixman Sphere. This step may introduce some difficulties as many different models of Ixman Spheres exist, with varying methods of turning them on and off. When in doubt, please contact your Ixman Sphere's manufacturer to help with this step if necessary. What? I don't know how to work an X-Men Sphere, whatever that is. You read a bunch of books! Which books should I look into? Let's go back. Go back. Uh, let's look at the look in the bathroom. One second, guys. Look inside the cabinet. No razors. There are some pain meds, though. Take some. I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but here we go. Uh, um, uh, let's go, actually, uh, why are we taking the pain meds? No. Let's, uh, okay, whatever. Ah, uh, take some, okay, not sure this is a good idea, but here we go. Yep, we took some pain meds for some fucking reason. Go back. Look inside the shower. Ha, huh, no shampoo to be found anywhere, of course. And no hint either, just some body wash. Inside the cabinet. Oh, uh, no, no, no more, no more pain meds. Okay, look in the kitchen. Look in the fridge. Plenty of stuff in here. Uh, let's save it right here. I like having my choices. Look at the meat. It's just a slab of meat, nothing special about it. Look at the milk. Pasteurized, at least they've got that down. Crack open an egg and look at... Nope, just regular... <laughs> Nope, just a regular egg. Let's... Nope, just a regular egg. 
<laughs> Can I offer you an egg in this trying time? Examine an unlabeled container. It's an unlabeled container with some sort of white liquid inside. Well, here goes nothing. It's salty. You drank a mystery liquid. I fucking drank semen, didn't I? Daredevil. I just took pain meds and drank some dragon cum. What the fuck? Look in the pantry. Just some fruits and veggies here. What should I look at? Date. I put it on the floor and then step on it. What would happen? It'd be going on a date. But no, there's no hint here. Fig. What do I know about figs? Quite a bit, actually. Figs are ripe with history and still enjoy some cultural significance, especially in religious circles. For example, they're the leaves with which Adam and Eve covered themselves up with in the Bible's Book of Genesis. It also happens to be the kind of tree Buddha achieved enlightenment under. Not only that, but it is also mentioned in Greek mythology. Isn't it fascinating? But wait, there's more. The influence of figs also extends towards, towards words, phrases, and sayings we still use today. Take the word sycophant, for example, which comes from a Greek expression meaning someone who shows the fig, which is a vulgar gesture at the time, or I don't, have a, I don't give a fig, which is, of course, a figure of speech. It might as well be said that the influence of figs is as far-reaching as its fruit is succulent. Figuratively speaking, that is. I'm afraid of nothing... I'm afraid nothing of this actually helps us with Reza's letter, though. <laughs> wow! We've got a brief history on figs and some fig-related puns. Pair. There are two of them. What a nice pair. <laughs> Shut up, Keegan! Grape. So, Daddy Grape finds his kid crying and asks, What's wrong, kid? But through all the tears, the kid couldn't get a single word out. Eventually, Daddy had enough, so he said, Stop it! No, I won't say it. <laughs> it wasn't a good joke, anyway. You learned a lot about fruits. What should I look at? Fruitarian. Lemon! Lemons. Lemons. Lemons, of course! Why didn't I realize it sooner? Lemon juice is about the simplest way to write a hidden message using household items. We learned about that in chemistry, in the most boring detail, of course. A message written in lemon juice on paper beca becomes just about invisible to the naked eye when dried. After, But after heating it gently, oxidization occurs, making the message visible. I was sitting next to him in class when we learned that. He made a joke about using the method to cheat on the next test, and I replied by saying he'd have to bring an iron. Had he really expected me to remember a random chemistry class that happened years ago? But then, I did remember, after all. Meet me at the portal tonight, 10 p.m., was all the message said. I wasted a good amount of time, but still had some time left before I'd have to go out to meet Reza, so I decided to make some lunch. Afterwards, I resumed reading my book about the continuing adventures of Sheridan and her exploits in destroying cultural artifacts. Unsurprisingly, it came to a happy end, with the evil organization stopped in its tracks, at least for now. I thought the ending was deliberately left open for ambiguity, but when I tried to th I turn the page and saw the advertisement for the next entry in this apparently long-running series of books, I realized all of this had just been a ploy to set up the inevitable sequel. Luckily, the disappointment didn't last long as I had to get going to meet Reza at the portal. When I got outside, it didn't seem quite as dark as, when I, as it was when I first arrived. I might have difficulties finding my way, otherwise, I could, otherwise but I could still see the portal in the distance. <sighs> As I was walking, I wondered if anyone was following me, but the land seemed oddly deserted. Was everyone already asleep? That's really cool. Eventually, I arrived at my destination. Reza was already standing idly by the portal, his fidgeting making it obvious that he, was, that he had waited just for me. I was already wondering whether you'd get it at all. Guess I did. What did you expect? I didn't make you. You didn't make it easy. Yes, I did. What a wonderful night it is. What did you expect? What did they expect? I just want to see what the. Well, you didn't make it easy. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter. What a wonderful night it is. What a wonderful night it is. Just look up at the stars. You can see them so clearly. All the pollution linger in the air, like back home. Almost as if we were looking right into the face of eternity itself. For so long, humanity thought we'd find aliens out there. Yet after all these years, we found that we were still alone in the universe. Turns out we were just not looking in the right place. What's going on, Reza? Why did you call me here at this time? For one, because we're sending the generator home. Right. Before I was sent here, they told me that they would limit the use of the portal as I couldn't afford to keep it open all the time. In order to keep in contact with us and to enable us to send things over to them, the portal would be open for just a quarter of an hour each day. Sending something back home wasn't really problematic for us, since the high energy expenditure associated with sending bigger objects only affected the sender, not the receiver. However, this also meant that until all business was concluded in regards to our trade with the PDAs and the generators, we were basically stuck here. As for the other, do you know what this place is? You said something about trouble. How much danger are we in, really? More than enough. I'm afraid this whole place will be gone soon, and we better not be here when it happens. What? What are you talking about? 
I'd hope you'd see it too, but then it took me a while to understand, and I had to head to, and I had to head to start on you in any case. One second, guys. Okay. <clears throat> While he was speaking, my gaze wandered and fixed on some movement nearby. It was hard to make out anything, but I imagined it might have just been wind blowing through the nearby shrubbery, except for the fact that there was no wind. Reza, this might, be, this might take a while to explain, but we've got the whole night. Reza, look. He turned around to face whatever I was seeing. He squinted hard before he called out. You! How dare you follow me even here! The disturbance came closer until it became clear that it was Maverick, who had hidden nearby to listen in our conversation. I knew you were up to no good. What were you talking about? What are you planning here? Some kind of attack? Wait a minute. There's no reason for it. Don't try to deny it. I heard you both talking about it in the cafe. And I saw the letter. You think I couldn't smell the lemon on it? Pathetic. You'll have to come with me to the police station now. Both of you. Come on. I think you're overreacting. But we'll... Um... Yeah, well, dude. What the fuck is a gun gonna do against dragon scales? <laughs> Reza, what are you doing? Come on, Keegan, let's get out of here! In the dragon's side, I could see the wound where the bullet had penetrated his hide, a trickle of blood staining his dark scales in the earth underneath. Reza used the opportunity to run off in some direction. I wasn't sure which. I frantically scanned my surroundings looking for Reza, though he had already vanished into the darkness. What was I supposed to do? Run away as well? Help Maverick? I was just a diplomat and I had no idea what was happening. Suddenly, the dragon whipped around, hitting me in the guts with his thick tail. I was lifted off the ground briefly before I felt the impact of my body hitting the ground. Hard enough that my vision blurred almost immediately. A deafening roar battered my ears. Was this his cry for help? I could barely move, but I found it better not to try. As to, as to not startle the wounded dragon more than he already was. It certainly would have ended badly for me if he tried anything. I heard him take a few inches steps before he lay down on the ground, panting. I'm still watching you, you know. And you better not move for your own good. If I have to get up again and come after you in this condition, I can promise you I won't be nice. It took a few minutes minutes of listening to his labored breathing some before someone arrived. It was two dragons. The first I recognized as Sebastian. The other one I didn't know. I heard Sebastian and Maverick exchange a few words when the stocky fellow approached me. Oh, that's a big boy. Is it the sheriff dragon? Am I going to have to do a big old drawn out southern accent for him? I don't know. Maybe I should. Hey, kid. You all right? Oh. Okay, uh, hmm. Uh. I only got ten seconds left, so I may as well just end it right here. Um, Bryce is the name of my friend who died this year. Uh, yeah. It's okay, I'm alright. I just didn't expect that. But, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of people have the name Bryce, so, whatever, that'd be fun. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!